Hi Adya Didi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm also good. So, today we like, will do Python strings, we will continue with that. Okay. Yeah, so I've shared my screen, can you see? Yes, yes, I can see. Okay. So uh, we left over here uh, in the on the in uh, in uh, keyword. So when we wanted to check if a character or a word is in the string, then we use the in keyword to check that if it is in the string. Now if yes. we want to check that if, that it is not in the string, not in. So like here, the best things in life are free. And then we say expensive not in text. So this will give true as it is not in the text. If it was in the yeah. text, it will show false. Uh, uh, and uh, we can also use the if statement to check uh, like if expensive is not in the text, then we will say no expensive is not in the not is not present in the text. So if we yeah. run this code, we'll see that no expensive is not present so basically it's the opposite of n not n is basically the opposite of n uh, okay yeah okay next we are on string slicing so if we want some part of the string or like some characters of the string then we will slice the string so we do that through square brackets and uh, this is our starting point and this is our ending point. When slicing the end index is not included. So this will go, this will slice from second index to fourth index as the fifth index will not be included. Second is yes. L. So L, L, O. So from when slicing B from two to five, we will get L, L, O. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you done slicing before? Yeah, yeah, I've done, I've done all this, like, I've done Python before, no? Okay. And, uh, the basic Python. Okay, so, uh, today, I think we'll reach till bitwise operators also, so have you done bitwise operators? No, I've not done bitwise operators. Okay, so that will be a new thing. So, we'll reach till bitwise operators today, so we'll do bitwise operators also today. So, okay. like, I've not done, uh, from the list like i've not done lambda array classes objects inheritance all these things i've not done before that i've done okay. and bitwise operator i've not done like i've done the basics of python okay okay so we'll go through this quickly yeah yeah okay so next uh, we can slice from start so if we give no index and uh, this no start index then from the starting of the yes. string till the end index it will slice and similarly slice to the end we'll give uh, the start index and it will slice till the end so it will include the exclamation mark in the end also so okay. it so it will be l till the exclamation mark yes understood okay and we can slice through negative indexing also so minus 5 to minus 2 and uh, minus 2 won't be included so it will slice till minus 3 so minus 5 is, yeah. this is minus 1, this is minus 2, D is minus 2, uh, L is minus 3, R is minus 4 and O is minus 5. So it will bring O, R, L because D will not be, include, uh, not be included. Yes, yes. Okay, so this was negative indexing. Next we have how we can modify a string. So we can make this in uppercase through upper method. So all letters will be capital. Through the lower method, all letters will be small, including H and W. Yes. Next, uh, white, the strip method removes all the white, uh, white spaces from the start and the end of the string. Uh, next, uh, the replace method, it replaces any letter you want in your string with some other letter. So for example, we want okay. to replace H to J, so it will be Jello World. Now, if we want to replace L to M, then, then you will see we will get a, getting hemo world, hemo worm, whatever. So, 
it's basically replacing all instances of L in that string, all occurrences of L. Yeah. And uh, next we have split. So split basically divides the string into a list and uh, we are splitting on comma. So hello will be one element of the list and space world exclamation mark will be another element of the list. Hello. Yes, yes, I understood. Uh, okay, so you have done split before now because like... Yes, yes, I've done split before. I've done all the string functions. Okay, okay, okay. So next we have string concatenation. As we saw, we can concatenate through the plus operator. And also when we want to add a space, we can concatenate a separate uh, blank space string. by yeah. adding it in string. Uh, next is formatting the strings so uh, like we saw earlier we can't like con try to concatenate a number and a string that will give us an error so if we wanted to concatenate age to this we'll have to use the str method to first convert it into a string and then we could concatenate yeah. uh, next is string formatting so instead of doing like uh, like converting it to str we can use the uh, like we can say f before the string to represent format and <coughs> in the curly braces wherever we want to put our variable value uh, we put it in the curly braces inside of the string okay uh, and uh, similarly uh, so these curly braces are known as placeholders so in these placeholders we can put values of any variable we want so uh, this can automatically the age of the string convert ho jayega ha ek tarah se directly string ke andar put kar raha hai so hum f keyword se hum jo bhi brackets mein dalenge wo us variable ki value nikal ke le aayega to wo automatically aa jayega in wo basically str mein convert karke aur fir add karne ki jagah ek aur tarika hai ye so like when you want multiple variables uh, in your string then it makes it very easy yeah understood so like we can also add a placeholder for price also so here's one example price 59 so the price is 59 dollars yeah okay uh next a placeholder can include a modifier to format the value so like as you can see over here this is a modifier so what this modifier is basically saying is that add two decimal values after this number so we have 59 that is an integer now this modifier the dot to f is saying that add two decimals after this 59 so after 59 we'll uh, get dot zero zero so we are yeah. adding basically two decimals after this number and a placeholder okay. can contain python code also so you can write other python code also in the placeholder and if you want to do some operation you can do that and uh, that value will be put in so if we say the price is 20 to 59 dollars so it will put um, 1180 dollars yes. Uh, next uh, there is escape characters so one way we learned how to put quotes inside of quotes was that if you want to put double quotes then we will add single quotes outside I and mean, if we want to put single quotes inside then we'll add double quotes outside but uh, yeah. what if we are using double quotes outside and we want to use we want to add double quotes inside also so that mm we do that through this escape character that is the backslash so we add okay. the backslash just before whatever character we want to add like this double quote so it's not mm -hmm. only used for adding these quotes inside of quotes it's used for multiple things but basically escape characters treats treats uh, like some some things specially like this this backslash n which adds a new line inside of the string so 
basically double character uh, backslash and the character after it form a whole escape sequence okay so that escape sequence like is different escape sequences are meant to put in different values in the string so for example this is backslash n is an escape sequence which adds a new line and there are many escape sequences okay so backslash is an uh, like uh, is an escape character which basically is, uh, lets you put like illegal characters in the okay. string in the string yeah so we have like uh, backslash r that is carriage return that is also very similar to new line there is some difference but it's very similar now if you want to add another backslash in the string now if you want to add, if you just do it through a single backslash then it will take the next character to be escaped for example i want to add a backslash so this will try to escape this space character so it won't okay. be able to understand that we are trying to add a backslash it would try to treat this as an escape character so we'll have to add another backslash so what this will do this this will create an escape sequence and this will add a backslash in our string okay so backslash t adds a tab backslash b adds a backspace so for example if i do backslash b over here this will like remove one space so here okay. here it has removed one space i think uh let's see. let me just see because it did not uh yeah now it has removed yeah now it has removed i, I don't I, I don't get it it's not working properly over here backslash b it is like you it is it should add a, a backspace but it should have removed d or maybe this code okay. but it did not so i don't know why it's not working but basically backslash b adds a backspace and the backspace to you know jo bhi previous word or just remove kar dena ha matlab it ha like it is it is you, like used to remove the previous character but it is not doing right now yeah okay understood hmm now next is these are some uh, some more form feed so when you have when you are working with forms then we'll need this uh, add, to add an octal value and hex value we we will use these backslashes so they are like many so if you want to uh, this is for this is for an octal value so when we say backslash 110 so this is one octal value so 110 represents h uh, in octal form then 145 represents e 154 represents l 154 repre uh, and 157 represents o so these are some octal values and if we did not add the backslash it would have taken them as numbers only so through backslash we are telling that these are octal values and we need to interpret them as octal values then x 48 is also representation of h in hex hex uh, it's a hex value of the character h and similarly x 65 x6c x6f are all hex values of different different letters okay so basically these are this was just an escape character that that escaped that created escape sequences for us yes next these are many string methods so there are so many string methods so like uh, reading like going through the uh, these right now is like pretty difficult and it's, it will take very uh, like it will take a lot of time so i will i think if you have any doubt later if you uh, you told me that you already read the string method you already know the string methods so uh, i'll suggest that you go through the these string methods once yourself and if you have any doubt then you can just ask me yes yes i will do that yeah i'll just um, send on the chat the url yeah so these this is for the string methods next is the string exercises and 
it's basic pretty basic so let's just move on to the next concept now we are on booleans so basically boolean values are there are just two values true or false so 10 greater than 9 will return true 10 equals to 9 will, re will return false and 10 less than 9 will also return false so uh, boolean yeah. values are returned like these are true or false you can use them also like you can use true you can use false and uh, in conditions like this when using the greater than operator double equals to and less than operator they also give us the value true and false and uh, yes. like for example this is an example a is 200 and b is 33 if b is greater than a we are checking that is false so this will return false so the if statement is getting a false value so it will move on to the else statement and it will print b is not greater than a yeah and uh, we can also evaluate values and variables so for example we are saying bool hello so this is like type casting value to boolean like we type casted numbers into strings similarly in this case we are type casting a string into a boolean in this case we are type casting a number into a boolean so m most of the values in python like any string like any string or uh, any number will give true okay okay uh, but for example zero the number zero will give us false an empty string yeah. will give us false okay so there are certain values that will give us false but most of the values give us true so over here this is showing some values that are false so false itself is false then there's a none uh, value that we saw in uh, data types also so when the value that we have is not any of the is not like any of the data it is not of the data type that python has like it's not an integer string it's not any of those types then we get a none value that is also false zero also gives false empty string also gives false an empty tuple an empty list an empty object all give the value false okay and uh, then uh, uh, strings except of empty strings numbers uh, except of zero and lists uh, except of an empty list and most of the values give us true in python okay okay and uh, next this is a class that we are creating so we'll uh, like uh, do learn about classes in detail in the next chapters but uh, basically over here we are creating a class my class so basically through this class we can create objects so it's like it's like a, a cookie cutter for example so a cookie cutter through the cookie cutter we can cut cookies similarly through different classes we can create different different objects Okay, so basically uh, if we have a class my class and uh, then this is the length function uh, and this underscore underscore uh, forward and backward has a sp uh, like uh, before the name and after the name has a special meaning that we'll also see uh, and return zero when we create an object my object uh, of my class and then we uh, check the boolean of my object then we'll get false okay so we are getting false now uh, why is that because the length function what that is returning is zero okay yeah, so yeah. so if you if you see an object of a class whose length function is returning zero then it will give the boolean uh, the bool function will give its value as false okay is that fine yes, yes. Yeah, okay uh, next we have this like if we create a function and then we return true inside of it and uh, then when we print uh, after when we call my function then it will return true and then we are printing mm -hmm. the value that yeah. is being returned so we will get true printed on the screen yes yeah uh, next 
uh, we can also execute code based on boolean value so an if statement always responds according to the boolean value that it gets so if we are checking something whose boolean value is true then the if block will be executed and if you are checking something whose boolean value is false over here then uh, the else block will be printed will, will be executed and uh, if there is no else block then it won't execute the print block and it will just move on with the code so if we pass a false value to the if statement then it will always go and execute the else block and if we pass in okay, a true value so it will execute the um, the if so block थर्ड सो वॉट दिस इज सींग इज दैट वेन वी हैव एक्स इक्वल्स टू टू हंड्रेड एंड सॉरी देन वेन वी पास एक्स टू इज इंस्टेंस एंड पास एंड सो वॉट दिस इज डूइंग इज इट इज चेकिंग इफ टू हंड्रेड इज एन इंटीजर एंड इफ इट इज एन इंटीजर सो देन दिस इज इंस्टेंस फंक्शन विल रिटर्न ट्रू एंड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ वी हैड अ स्ट्रिंग ओवर हेयर so this is instance function would have returned false so for example right now we have an integer and we are checking ki if the integer 200 if 200 is an instance of the is an instance of integer so basically if it is an integer so that is true it is an integer so that's why is instance is returning true for example we had a string so now if when we pass the string to is instance and we are saying if it is an integer now 20 is in quotes so it's a string so it is not an integer so that's why this will yeah, return false, false. yeah okay and uh, we can it's not necessary we check for int we can also check for str so when we check for str then this will give true because mm -hmm. this is a string yeah Okay. Yes. Uh, next we are on operators. So now this will be new because there are many operators, but the bitwise operators are the most interesting ones out of these. So let's do the operators. So there are many types of operators. There are arithmetic operators, assignment operators, comparison, logical, identity, membership, and bitwise. So arithmetic operators are ba are basic. Uh, operators for arithmetic uh, arithmetic calculations for example plus for addition minus for subtraction star for multiplication a uh, one uh, slash for division percentage for modulus uh, double star for uh, like exponent and double slash for flow division so now plus minus multiplication division the uh, works regularly like uh, it does normally next percentage will give us the remainder modulus so 5% 2 so when we divide 5 by 2 we get the remainder 1 that is what yeah. it is showing exponent is to raise something to the power yes, of the other the yeah so 2 raised to the power 5 is happening over here so that's giving us 32 and then flow division is like for example we are doing 15 divided by 2 so this will give 7 so like it's the quotient flow division uh, it gives us the quotient so when we do normal division round the decimal part yeah it it does not round it off it like it go rounds it down the yeah part. it removes the yeah. decimal part it goes down so if you have 7.8 also then also flow division will give 7 Yes, yes. Uh, over here in this case, if we add a single slash, just to show you, it will give us 
सेवन पॉइंट फाइव या दिस इज नॉर्मल डिविजन नेक्स्ट वी हैव असाइनमेंट ऑपरेटर्स सो टिल नाउ वी सो द असाइनमेंट ऑपरेटर इक्वल्स टू नाउ देर आर मेनी अदर असाइनमेंट ऑपरेटर्स लाइक प्लस इक्वल्स टू माइनस इक्वल्स टू मल्टीप्लीकेशन इक्वल्स टू डिविजन इक्वल्स टू सो दीज आर बेस्ड ऑन आर अरिथमेटिक ऑपरेटर्स एंड देन वी हैव बिट वाइज असाइनमेंट ऑपरेटर्स ऑल्सो सो दीज आर बेस्ड ऑन आर बिट वाइज ऑपरेटर्स सो नाउ वन रेगुलर थिंग दैट दीज असाइनमेंट ऑपरेटर्स डज इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन वी डू एक्स प्लस इक्वल्स टू थ्री सो इट एड्स थ्री टू द ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स इफ वी से एक्स माइनस इक्वल्स टू थ्री इट सब्रैक्स थ्री फ्रॉम द ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्टिंग वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स एंड दिस इज वॉट इट डज फॉर for each of the assignment operators that are left so mu- multiplication okay. e- equals to will multiply multiply 3 with the already existing value of x division equals to will divide the value of x with 3 and uh, percent equals to will divide and return the remainder after the division of the value of x with 3 so it will return the remainder and then uh double slash equals that is a flow division equals that will basically flow divide the value of x with with 3 and save that value in x and uh, for the bitwise i'll it does the same thing and when we reach the bitwise section then i'll explain these bitwise in detail also and uh, oh. th- then there is this colon equals to which is uh like basically if we do print x colon equals to 3 so what this syntax does is it basically assigns the value 3 to a variable x and then prints the value of x, x. Okay. Yes. yeah so these are used to like shorten up our code and to quickly write the code and basically these assignment operators are just used to like do stuff quickly next we have comparison operators so for example double equals to checks if two values are equal not equals to checks if two values are not equal and uh, greater than checks if one value is greater than the other less than checks if one value is less than the other and then this is greater than equals to and less than equals to with checks if one va- value is whether greater than or equals to the other value or less than or equal to the other value so yeah understood yeah ha- have you done these comparison operators also before all these yeah i have done all these operators but i have not done the last one okay the bitwise okay. rule okay yeah uh okay so then we have and or and not so basically and returns to if the it's left hand side both and right hand side like yeah both are true so if 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 it's left operand and right operand both are true then it will return true in or if it's left operand that is this and right operand are out of this if one of them is true then it will return true and not will basically reverse the result for example x less than 5 and x less than 10 if this whole thing this ho- true. yeah if this whole thing gives true then this will give false and false. yeah if this gives false then this will give true so not basically reverses the result okay and uh, then there is this identity identity operators which is different than the double equals to operator so double equals to what it does is for example we have x and y apple banana apple banana when we do x double equals to y then it will give true because both the list have equal number of items and the same items but when we check x x is y that will give false because x is not actually y they both are stored in different memory locations 
so understood. when we create x that is stored in a separate memory location when we store y that is stored in a separate memory location for the is operator to return true it will have to be the op the lists have to be there present in the same memory location so any time we create a variable so x and z are present in the same memory location yeah so i was getting to that when we do z equals to x so basically this z is just another name for x so let me just show you through this so x is some assigned some memory location let's say 0 Y is assigned some memory locations. Let's say one, and Z is pointing to X, which is point, which is pointing to the memory location zero. So now when we yeah. check Z is X, then that will return true because both of them are pointing to the same memory location. When we check X is Y, both of them have different memory locations, so it will give us false. uh i just wanted to know are you aware the with the concept of memory locations yeah like i know a little bit about it basically uh, that everything that we like put in pattern or like any language it gets stored in some part of the uh, computer yeah so it it is stored in some part and it, that part has an id you can say it's an id or we say memory location so this okay. x will be stored in some id let's say that id is 0 y will be stored in some memory location whose id will be 1 and then z is pointing to x whose id is already given as 0 so basically it compares the addresses the addresses of the memory location uh, oh. the addresses of where the value is stored Uh, uh similarly there was is not so it is basically gives the reverse it's the reverse of the is operator is operator yeah and uh, then we already did in not in in the strings chapter and now yeah. the bitwise operators so for the bitwise operators we will have to work with numbers in bitwise form only so for example in binary form zero is All zeros. So these are these are uh, uh, how many bits? Four, five. Uh, these are sixteen bits. So basically, this is the all of these numbers are the binary representation of each of these uh, integers. So these numbers that are on the right are the binary representations of these integers. So zeros binary representation is zero 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 all zeros. one's binary representation is all zeros but on the right hand side one two's is this three's is this four is this five is uh, this and these are all the binary representations of these numbers now uh, uh, like uh, do you know how to like convert an uh, a binary number into an like integer so that uh, no i don't okay okay Uh, so basically what happens is over here we like take it in the powers of 2 so binary numbers are in base 2 right so base 2 why because it is 0 and 1 only so there are only two ways to represent value that is 0 and 1 so this is known as base 2 now now what happens is for example we have this uh, let's take this to be our binary number that we want to convert to an integer now what will happen we'll start with the rightmost bit that is 1 okay so it's 1 now the rightmost bit is our zeroth bit we'll take it like indexing okay so what we'll do we'll say 2 raised to the power 0 so our rightmost bit is the zeroth bit and into 1 so what this gives is this gives us 1 because 2 raised to power 0 is 1 and 1 into 1 gives us 1 now this will give 2 raised to power 1 for the next bit this over here 
it will we will have two raised to power one. But the bit into the bit uh, bit is zero. Yeah. So into zero. So this will give us zero. Zero. Yeah. Next, this is two raised to power two into zero. Into zero. So that into will also zero. give us zero. Then two raised to power three into into one five. that is giving us eight and then yeah. these all are zero so when we do two raised to power four into uh, into zero then we'll get zero okay. and so on we'll now get all zeros because there is no one over here yeah. now after after converting each bit into this number over here we will add all these numbers so we have one and we have eight so one plus eight that will give us nine so this is how we have converted this number into nine so okay, this this I is like this is how uh, this number is the representation of nine okay okay so this is how we convert binary into integers yeah this is how we convert binary into integers and one more thing is when we want to uh, uh, there are like um, types of binary numbers also like signed and unsigned so signed is basically when the leftmost bit shows the sign of the number so for example the leftmost bit was 1 and this was showing the sign of the number uh, like this was this was uh, this was showing the sign of the number then this would be negative so this number would be negative so this would be equals to negative 9 if one would be the signed bit and then unsigned numbers they they don't care what the leftmost bit is uh, it they do not they do not treat it as the sign okay understood okay so uh, there are like operators like and or xor not zero fill left shift and signed right shift now there are only there is only two minutes left in the meeting and uh, I uh, like really wanted to do the bitwise operators today but we don't have the time for it because these are actually advanced uh, like operators so yeah. we can it's do okay. it we yeah we can continue with them tomorrow but one major thing is to like um, like to learn about these bitwise operators we needed to know how to represent these integers or numbers in binary form and uh, uh, how how to convert the binary form into an integer so at least uh, we lo reach till there today and we can continue tomorrow yeah. with the bitwise I'll operators start today so that when you teach bitwise tomorrow i'll be thoroughly like these changing the bits into integers uh yeah uh just can you say your uh, like uh, like for the first two seconds what did you say uh, i'm saying that i practice the yeah, yeah. things that we talked about today no? that changing the bits into integers yeah so then uh, it will be easier tomorrow yeah i'll i'll send you the whole list uh, with the conversion so that you can compare your answers also with uh, okay okay yes yeah so i've sent uh, thank you and let's meet tomorrow at same time. Yes, thank you so much, Arvind. Thank bye -bye. you, Ajadidi. Bye bye.